Good morning, students. So, a very commonly encountered problem in the OPD. The patient comes to you with complaints of diarrhea, with blood and mucus in stool. Stool examination reports reveal presence of cyst and trophozoites of Entamoeba histolytica. What will you do? The answer is you will prescribe anti-amoebic drugs, right? So let's see what are these drugs. But before that, we have to understand what is amoebiasis. Amoebiasis. So amoebiasis is an infection caused by pathogenic anaerobic protozoa. End amoeba. So anaerobic. anaerobic bacteria, sorry, uh, protozoa and amoeba. Four species of end amoeba has been isolated from the stool samples of human. These are end amoeba histolytica. Clearly the name suggests this histolytica means amoeba that causes tissue lysis. End amoeba Bangladeshi. This is a novel species which was recently discovered in Bangladesh. Therefore, the name End amoeba Bangladeshi. End amoeba Moskovsky. And lastly, End amoeba Despair. So, out of these four, End amoeba Moskovsky and End amoeba Despair are not found to be pathogenic. Whereas, Entamoeba histolytica and Bangladeshi was found to be pathogenic. Now, two main factors. One is the poor socio-economical status and poor environmental sanitation are the two main factors that play, important factors that play for the uh, spread of this disease. This disease generally spreads by fecal root and, and can present with a variety of clinical manifestations. These can be asymptomatic cyst passes, acute amoebic dysentery or the patient may, comes with, may come with amoebic abscess, most commonly in the liver and rarely seen in the lungs and the brain. So commonly it is seen in the liver and rarely abscess is seen in the lungs and the brain. So, let us understand how this happens. The cyst, cysts are the infective form of this parasite. On ingestion of the cyst, the cyst passes through the stomach, reaches the intestine where they release trophozoites. Now, these trophozoites may again form cyst and may pass through the feces without affecting the patients. Therefore, uh, asymptomatic cyst passes. Or these trophozoids may invade the colonic mucosa. Remember, colonic mucosa and cause ulcers. Therefore, giving symptoms like loose tools with blood and mucus. These trophozoites may also reach the liver where, may, where they may give rise to amoebic liver abscess. Now, during acute amoebic dysentery, a patient may pass both trophozoites as well as cyst, but the cyst is the infective form, not the trophozoites. Clear? Here you can see this is a entamoeba histolytica cyst. This is an trophozoite. See the flask shaped ulcer. See the margins. This is a flask shaped ulcers, which is the reason the patient comes with complaints of blood mixed with blood and mucus mixed with stool. This picture shows a large amoebic liver abscess. Let us start with the
classification. Anti amoebic drugs are broadly classified as tissue amoebicides and luminal amoebicides. Tissue means that works in the tissues and luminal means that will work in the intestinal lumen. Now, tissue amoebicides tissue amoebicides. Some drugs may function both in the intestine as well as in the extraintestinal sites. These are metronidazole, tinidazole, secnidazole, ornidazole and sartronidazole. Alkaloids like emitin, dehydroemitin are not used nowadays because they are toxic and chloroquine is only used for extraintestinal amoebiasis only. So this was tissue amoebicides. And in the luminal amoebicides, diloxonide furoate, iroquinol, tetracyclines and paramomycins are also used. The most important being the nitroimidazole groups and the diloxonide furoate. So we will be discussing only these two drugs in details. So let's start with metronidazole. Directly, we will go to the mechanism of action. After entering the cells by diffusion, its nitro group is reduced by certain redox proteins called the PFOR. What is this PFOR? I'm coming. Operative only in anaerobic microbes to a highly reactive nitro radical which exerts a cytotoxicity. So let's understand this. Pyruvate is converted to acetylcholine, acetyl coenzyme A for generation of energy. In this process, ferridoxin is reduced by the actions and this process is catalyzed by the enzyme PFOR. PFOR is pyruvate ferridoxin oxidoreductase. In the presence of metronidazole. This nitro group of this metronidazole takes the electron from the ferridoxin and becomes a reactive nitro group. This reactive nitro group damages the DNA. Number one, damages the DNA, various cellular proteins, and also disrupts the energy metabolism, ultimately leading to cell death. Yeah. So this is how metronidazole works. Metronidazole is almost completely absorbed when administered orally, metabolized by the liver by oxidation and glucuronide conjugation. Its plasma T half is ATAS. Uses of metronidazole. Where are they used? So first use of metronidazole is in cases of anaerobic protozoa. What are these anaerobic protozoas? Number one, N. tamiba histolytica. This one, N. tamiba histolytica. Giardia lamlia. This one. And Trichomonas vaginalis. Remember, in case of Trichomonas vaginalis, both partners are to be treated. Both the partners are to be treated. Next, metronidazole is also used in anaerobic bacterial infections like bacteroid fragilis, Clostridium perfringens that gives rise to gas gangrene. Gas gangrene. Clostridium difficile that gives rise to pseudomembranous enterocolitis. Fusobacterium 
that gives rise to ulcerative gingivitis acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis various peptococci that give rise to bacterial vaginitis and in cases of helicobacter pylori along with other antibiotics and ppi as triple therapy or quadruple therapy metronidazole is also used in cases of helminth that is dracunculus medinensis commonly called the guinea worm but it is not sidled to this helminth it only helps in the extraction of this worm it only helps in the extraction of this worm clear adverse effects of metronidazole most commonly anorexia nausea metallic taste and abdominal cramps are seen this anorexia and nausea is due to this metallic taste less frequently side effects like headache glossitis dryness of mouth and dizziness is noted in allergy subjects subjects urticaria flushing rashes or fixed drop eruption may occur very rarely peripheral neuropathy seizures and leukopenia is noted thrombophlebitis occurs only in patients receiving metronidazole iv contraindications they are contraindicated in neurological diseases in blood dyscrasias first trimester pregnancy and cautious use in chronic alcoholics as they give rise to a disulfiram like reaction next is a tinidazole which is equally efficacious congener of metronidazole metabolism is slower with a t half of 12 hours so it's a longer acting molecule the incidence of side effects is lower therefore better tolerated onidazole has similar activity to metronidazole but it is slowly metabolized and has a t half of 12 to 14 hours sartronidazole also has a longer t half of 14 hours but no nausea and vom nausea vomiting or metallic taste is seen unlike metronidazole neurological complications and disulfiram like reactions are also not seen with sartronidazole last drug the diloxanide furovid it is a highly effective luminal amnibicide it is a drug of choice remember this one this is a drug of choice for mild intestinal or asymptomatic amebiasis mild intestinal or asymptomatic amebiasis or asymptomatic cyst passes asymptomatic cyst passes it is a drug of choice but is less effective in invasive dysentery when given orally it splits in the intestine most of the diloxanide is absorbed and is conjugated to form a glucuronide which is then excreted in the urine the unabsorbed diloxanide which constitutes only 10% of the administered dose is the main amebicidyl agent side effects are again very minimal like flat ones nausea urticaria therefore well tolerated so coming back to the problem the patient came with loose stool mixed with blood and mucus so you will prescribe tablet metronidazole 400 mg one tablet thrice daily for 7 days along with it a luminal amebicide that is diloxanide furovid 500 mg one tablet three days for 7 days 